So, so today we'll be discuss discussing about the usefulness of EEG in ICU, what the intensivists needs to know. So most of you must have uh, worked in an ICU setup. You must have seen the neurologist ordering EEG uh, quite a lot of times. And you may be wondering what is the use of EEG? Uh, will it really help in the patient management? What are we going to get by uh, doing this EEG? How is it going to change the management? And also you may be thinking how to interpret this EEG. Uh, so uh, I hope you can um, answer some of your uh, doubts or uh, uh, issues that you have with EEG. So uh, the scheme will be, uh, we'll look at normal EEG, uh, when to order EEG in neuro ICU, how is the EEG useful? And we'll look at so the abnormal discharges, how to identify the abnormal discharges. Then some important conditions how the EEG appears in some important conditions like status epilepticus, non-convulsive status, water, bleds, and how does the EEG appear in brain death? And also how, how does the EEG appear in various encephalopathies as well as in hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy? So this is the scheme. So normal EEG, like uh, we all uh, uh, as MBBS students are exposed to ECG and we all know how to interpret ECG, not all the common waves like P waves, QRS complex T waves, what are the various abnormalities that happen in an MI or in an AF or in hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, these common basic things, all of us who have done MBBS know. But uh, for some reason, EEG was completely not exposed to uh, us in, M uh, in MBBS. Uh, so it's something that is completely alien uh, to non-neurologists. So that's why uh, we need to know some basics about uh, normal EEG uh, so that we can interpret what is abnormal. So EEG is basically a tool to measure and display the electrical activity of the brain. So in, while recording EEG, we use sensors that are placed on the head and they can detect the electrical activity from the brain. And that electrical activity will appear in form of waveforms. So this picture that you're seeing this is uh, uh, showing the placement of electrodes over the head while EEG is being recorded. So by convention in EEG, the odd numbers are uh, selected for the left, the even numbers. The odd numbers means one, three, and five, and uh, all these are for the uh, uh, like left-sided recordings. Similarly, uh, even numbers for the right-sided recordings, two, four, six, eight. Uh, at the same time, uh, there is also like uh, the, uh, there is also alphabets like F, C, P, T, O. So you must be wondering what these are. So these these determine the location of the electrodes. So F is for frontal. So T is temporal. O is occipital. P is parietal, and C is central. So so based on so when when we when we record when we look at the EEG recording graph and say that some activity is happening uh, in the leads between F7 and F3, that means it is happening somewhere here. Or if, if it is happening between F, F7 and T3, so that means it is happening somewhere here, so left temporal region. So if it is happening, let's say, uh, between T6 and O2, that means right occipital region. So, so, so like this, like this, like this, uh, these are the areas from which the EEG recording is happening. Uh, and Z re refers to the mid midline, like FZ, CZ, and PZ re refers to the midline recording that we are recording from the midline of the head. And coming to the EEG signal rhythms, uh, so you, we all know that uh, various rhythms happen in sleep uh, as well as in wakefulness. So in a normal adult, in a normal relaxed state, when somebody is in a relaxed state, we all have alpha activity. Uh, which is in the uh, 8 to 13 hertz range. Uh, if there is alert state where we are concentrating on something or there is too much of attention, it may go to beta range, which is from 13 to 30. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, usually uh, while when someone becomes drowsy, it goes into theta. When we are just about to go into a deep sleep, it, it goes into theta. In most adults, the sleep may be light sleep, so it may be in theta range only. In children and in some adults, and at least in some part of the sleep, we go to delta sleep, which is like a deep sleep where the activity is quite slow. So, so let's look at normal EEG. So this is an example of a normal EEG. So, so you are seeing uh, whatever I told you about the uh, frontal, central, occipital, and parietal areas, and uh, here the here uh, the left-sided leads. Uh, 
are the odd number ones they are on blue color and right sided leads are in red color and these uh, these waveforms that you are seeing is a normal normal activity that happens uh, so waveforms in eeg are better represented in the posterior head region that's why you are seeing the waveforms more prominently in the p3 o1 p4 o2 t5 o1 t6 o2 than in the anterior leads because uh, uh, electrical activity is better represented in the posterior head region uh, leads and normally it should be in the alpha range like i told you so this is the this particular uh, frame is one second so if you count in this case it will come to the if you can count either the crests or the troughs to know the amplitude to, to know the frequency and if you count here it will come to around 12 so that is in the alpha range which is a normal alpha so you should also you should look at the frequency you should also look at the uh, symmetry whether the both sides are fairly symmetrical uh, and both sides are synchronous whether uh, the activity if the the amplitude if it is same we call it symmetry the frequency if it is same we call it synchrony so in this case there is activity of 12 hertz uh, symmetric and synchronous so that is almost both sides of the hemisphere uh, are uh, similar so this is what we see in a normal eeg so what happens when it comes to epileptiform discharges so we commonly call them ieds or interictal epileptiform discharges so what happens during seizure is different what happens between seizure is different let's say some somebody had a seizure and we are recording an eeg few hours later or or in the next day or the day after and at that time he is not having a seizure he is fully normal but even in that normal state they uh, the pe people who have epilepsy can produce some discharges called interictal epileptiform discharges so they are not happening during the seizure that's why it is called interictal but there are some discharges that are happening so that is the whole purpose of doing eeg for a patient who is who is not having a seizure at that moment this is not an icu setting this is in a normal setting like let's say uh, somebody has a doubtful seizure we want to know whether it is a seizure or not so we ask for eeg we are trying to pick up this interictal epileptiform discharges because if they are present that means it's it's a clue that it could be epilepsy so so we look at uh, so these these may appear like spikes or spike and wave discharges or sharp waves uh, they can be either in one area of the brain then you call it focal discharges they can be there diff uh, in diffusely in um, uh, entire uh, areas of the brain then we call it generalized so see if you take a look at this example see here the background activity is not exactly alpha it is in the slow theta theta range uh, theta to delta range around 6 to 7 activity is there so probably this is in a sleep like state uh, and then see background activity fairly has been like this and then you see sudden disruption of background activity so there is something called a spike and wave discharge there is a spike sharp spike and then there is a wave and after the spike and wave there is a slowing that is there for a certain period and then it goes back to the previous so this is a, this is an example of an interictal epileptiform discharge and in this case it is a generalized spike wave discharge because it is there in all the leads it is not restricted to only one part of the brain it is there in all the leads bilaterally both left as well as right side so then you call it a generalized uh, epileptiform discharge whereas in the second example you are seeing something in only one particular area of the brain see so you, you are seeing this in f8 or t4 region there is a sharp spike and then there is a wave so uh, so he, even here it is in the uh, the similar region so so the spike and this shows spike and wave discharges mainly in the f8 or t4 region so 8 is the right side uh, t4 and f8 are in the f8 is anterior temporal t4 is temporal so it's right temporal region there is a spike and wave focal discharges which indicate that there is some abnormality in the brain in that region so so this is how we identify epileptiform discharges so, but uh, we should also know when to order an eeg in icu is it ordered for everybody who who walks into neuro icu so when do you order a eeg in icu so one is an unexplained altered sensorium second one is intermittent unresponsive episodes uh, uh, in form of waxing and waning sensorium for sometimes the sensorium is better for sometimes there is drowsiness we are not understanding why that is happening whenever somebody has paroxysmal events we don't we were unable to characterize the events there is some some uh, limb jerking we don't know whether it's a tremor you don't know whether it is a dystonia you don't know whether it is a myoclonus or a seizure uh, so in such situations also you order an eeg persistent drowsiness hours after seizure we all know that after seizure there is something called post ictal state where there where the person tends to be drowsy but the drowsiness usually goes away within half an hour so if somebody is drowsy even after half an hour of having a seizure 
if no medication like lorazepam is given and even after half an hour of seizure if somebody is drowsy then we have to always suspect it could be a uh, non convulsive status and we have to order an eeg and in post cardiac arrest status to see whether there is any significant hypoxic injury to the brain uh, in all these settings we may require an eeg in neuro in icu so how is it eeg how is it useful in icu so one most important entity is non convulsive seizures or non convulsive status epilepticus so so that can be diagnosed only by doing an eeg uh, and other paroxysmal events also we can identify whether they are seizures or not by doing an eeg in neuro icu second indication is when some, when we treating a patient with status epilepticus so status epilepticus treatment is a very important treatment so in status epilepticus especially in refractory status epilepticus we may have to use anesthetic agents so when we are when we are giving anesthetic agents uh, we have to know we have to we have to do something we have to maintain something called as burst suppression so that uh, the status again does not recur so especially when we use uh, uh, thiopentone when we use thiopentone we try to achieve burst suppression because we are basically trying to suppress the brain so that the epileptiform activity does not come so to know whether uh, the therapy is adequate whether the you know, thiopentone dose is adequate or not whether we have to look at eeg when we are uh, giving thiopentone and continuous eeg recording and make sure that the burst suppression is maintained so another important indication is sometimes eeg may be useful for identifying an ischemia cerebral ischemia let's say there is sudden altered sensorium sudden unresponsiveness one sided positive of limb uh, you suspect a stroke uh, suspect a stroke but because of patient being on inotropic support or or iabp or cr or various other reasons you are not able to shift the patient to a ct scan so it can be a surrogate marker that there is ischemia if if one side of the brain is showing uh, significant slowing and other side of the brain activity is fairly normal so that that means that is that is uh, an indirect indication that there is an ischemia to one side of brain however this is useful only in large strokes may not be very useful in small strokes because in small strokes or in medium sized strokes uh, there may not be diffuse hemispheric slowing so it's it can be a surrogate marker uh, when imaging is not possible so it's also useful for assessing the severity of encephalopathy and prognostication uh, extent of hypoxic insult and confirmation of brain death these are two important uh, indications and also to monitor sedation and high dose suppressive therapy just like we have discussed so now we we'll look at eeg in certain important conditions so the most important of them is status epilepticus so non convulsive seizures are most common ictal manifestations in an icu patient should be considered while evaluating uh, causes of altered sensorium so after a seizure usually patient uh, patient's alertness starts improving within 10 minutes and at the end of more than 30 minutes usually uh, consciousness should be getting almost Uh, close to normal if if no medication was given if that is not happening then we have to do an eeg uh, to look for ongoing seizure activity so non convulsive seizures how do we identify without eeg how do we identify uh, in in icu they may be very subtle there may be no manifestations or there may be subtle manifestations like face and limb myoclonus some jerking in the face nystagmus or eye deviation pupillary abnormalities like hippus autonomic instability depressed level of consciousness or confusion so if any of these are there we have to suspect it could be a non convulsive seizure so so non convulsive seizures are so common that 10% of patients with unexplained coma or altered consciousness in icu are reported to have non convulsive status even even those who did not have prior a uh, clinical seizures so and prolonged non convulsive status or uh, non convulsive seizures can increase mortality and increase risk for poor ne- neurological outcome so that that uh, is the importance of uh, picking it up immediately or as soon as possible so if you look at the etiology of seizures in icu patients with uh, non convulsive status epilepticus and non convulsive seizures so usually in acute symptomatic cases it is multi organ failure anoxic ischemic encephalopathy or sah or intracerebral hemorrhage or encephalitis whereas remote symptomatic like old stroke uh, or uh, prior idiopathic seizures any uh, tumors like meningioma or av malformations or trauma uh, Uh, all all these all these can uh, be uh, uh, reasons for uh, 
एटियोलॉजी ऑफ सीजर्स और नॉन कन्वर्स स्टेटस एपिलेप्टिकस सो दिस ईज क्राइटेरिया वी कैन स्किप बिकॉज वी आर रियली गोइंग इन टू द इंट्रिकसिस ऑफ डायग्नोसिस बट ऑल वी नीड टू नो इज दैट वेन समी इज हैविंग प्रोलॉन्ग्ड डिस्चार्जेस uh then we need to like continuous discharges that are lasting uh, for more than 10 seconds uh spike and wave discharges then we need to suspect it could be uh, non convulsive seizures so uh, difference between non convulsive seizure and status epilepticus if there is a continuous seizure for more than 30 minutes that's when we suspect it to be with that that's when we uh, conclude it to be non convulsive status epilepticus so i want to just show a case quickly so this is a 18 year old girl uh, who had seizures and altered behavior for 10 days who presented in a uh, state of altered sensorium with a gcs of 10 and mri is showing a blurring of gray wave differentiation in left temporal region which is common uh, uh, like the clinical picture is pointing towards a focal encephalitis so in this picture you can see that initially there is a diffuse slowing slowly you can see some rhythmic activity building up in the left temporal region so that that rhythmic activity has become more clear in the next page and now it is more clearly like a seizure that is propagating in the left hemisphere so there is a seizure that is propagating in the left hemisphere more predominantly in the temporal region and uh, the eg technician has mentioned that patient is non responsive at that time and then uh, once the event has subsided the patient was trying to get up uh, so here we can clearly see some spikes in the uh, left temporal uh, frontal temporal region so this is a typical example of uh, uh, focal encephalitis more commonly herpes encephalitis which can present with uh, seizures uh, i also want to briefly discuss about pleds so pleds stands for periodic lateralized epileptic form discharges so they are basically periodic discharges that can occur at 1 to 2 second intervals uh, and uh, usually they they persist for more than 10 minutes to call it pleds they should persist for more than 10 more than 10 minutes so pleds are common in encephalitis strokes and tumors and in space occupying lesions usually something that is restricted to one area of one hemisphere that is when you see pleds so an easy example so this this kind of discharges uh, spike and wave discharges they are happening happening periodically they are almost happening every second so and if they if this kind of discharges continue for let's say 10 minutes then you call them pleds this is another example of pleds uh, happening on the left hemisphere uh happening every second so they are lateralized to one side and they are they are in the patellar area but uh, periodic they are happening every every second so if you look at eeg in encephalopathy how is it different so eeg in encephalopathy shows a diffuse slowing severity of encephalopathy determines the degree of slowing so uh usually in encephalopathy how do you differentiate encephalopathy from encephalitis on eeg in encephalopathy it is a diffuse slowing whereas in encephalitis you see discharges focal discharges or or periodic lateralized epileptic form discharges that is how do you differentiate encephalopathy and encephalitis there are, there can be something called as triphasic waves which may be seen uh, in uh, Uh, encephalopathy how to identify them uh, this is this is an encephalopathy just showing diffuse slowing there are no abnormal discharges but there is diffuse slowing and the, this is showing little more severe slowing like uh, this is in the theta range this is in the delta range severe slowing and these arrows are pointing to what we call as triphasic waves triphasic means there should be three phases there is a uh, there is a negative positive and negative so and there when three phases are there these are called triphasic waves so these these these, these are uh, tri example for triphasic waves which are characteristic characteristically seen in hepatic encephalopathy but can be seen in multiple other causes of metabolic encephalopathy again the similar image so next example is hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy so whenever somebody has sustained a cardiac arrest or severe hypoxic injury so we all know that brain is very sensitive and it can develop hypoxic encephalopathy so how to identify it on eeg so eeg shows Uh, slowing of very variable severity it may show very moderate slowing or severe slowing but in a very severe hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy we see what is called as burst suppression pattern so this is this is a, a classical example of burst suppression pattern this is a burst and this is suppression so you're not seeing any activity and again there is a burst so the interburst interval is the this gap between the two bursts so if interburst interval is very long the prognosis is very poor but in general also if somebody has burst suppression pattern after uh, cardiac correct uh, we can say that the prognosis is very poor because it is uh, showing that there is severe injury to the brain 
so burst suppression pattern uh, so the intervening periods of low amplitude uh, so and uh, there are bursts uh, interval interburst interval should be at least 1 second so this is showing even longer prolonged interburst intervals similar examples so how, how does the eeg appear in brain death so e first thing to clarify eeg is not mandatory uh, to confirm brain death in adults but it can be a good supportive uh, supportive uh, information so uh, when we do eeg and there is electrocerebral silence that means there is no recordable electrical activity when we are recording at a very low sensitivity because we want to pick up even the smallest possible activity so when we are recording at the lowest sensitivity of 2 microvolt even then if the brain electrical activity is not at all recordable that is called electrocerebral silence it indicates that there is no cortical activity possible but because of the various ecg artifacts as well as uh, icu related ventilator related artifacts may be seen but the recording as such uh, it will not show any uh, brain related activity so this is an example Uh, uh, this is uh, recorded at three microvolt sensitivity, and you are seeing only these these particular uh, uh, waves, which are actually uh, ECG artifacts because they are they are occurring at very regular interval. They will correlate with the ECG. So these are the ECG artifacts. Otherwise, it is a completely uh, silent recording. So these are the various uh, abnormalities that we usually come across. Uh, in uh, uh, neuro icu so i i want all of you to be familiar at the end of this talk with what is eeg what are the various waveforms uh, what are the various uh, uh, various uh, uh, recordings that we do and how to identify normal eeg how to identify abnormal discharges as well as uh, various eeg in various neurological conditions and also most importantly to pick up the condition of status epilepticus of non convulsive status epilepticus if this much we are able to do i think uh, that will be good enough for uh, uh, for a uh, management of uh, neurological patients in uh, neuro icu thank you